Hello everyone, Ultimate Steve here, and welcome to episode 2 of Solar Station. And there's a lot I didn't film right there, like between episode 1 and episode 2. And there was a lot I did film and didn't use, because uh, it was really disjointed and whatnot. But in case you didn't see the end of the last video, the gist is we're going to build a space station in a 200 megameter orbit and then maybe have a mission to go lower from there. And it turns out that from low carbon orbit, uh, the amount of delta V you need to get to this orbit is around 25 and a half kilometers per second. Uh, it seems like a lot. Yeah, it is a lot, and it's easily the most delta V I've ever put into a mission, especially the one that has to come back with the crew. That's got to double that number. But with better time warp, but with better... Hold on, let me mute that Discord server. With better time warp and a bunch of ion engines, it actually is not as much delta V as I thought it was. Like, uh, I think I'm going to use ion engines a lot more if I have better time warp installed. Because, like, with better time warp, like, all their disadvantages are nullified. They're just basically another engine at that point. All right, we're gonna launch at sunset, so we still have visibility, but so that we can easily turn over, uh, well, that way for you guys, and uh, and go to solar orbit that way. Uh, I'm kind of surprised. Oh, by the way, I should probably say what we're actually doing. This is the core module of Icarus Station, and Icarus is probably the most overused space station name in Kerbal Space Program history. Like, oh, if you stick a thing into orbit around the sun, you're gonna call it. Icarus Station, because it's around the sun, and that's cool. Or maybe even Moho, like, oh, Icarus Station around Moho. It's cliche, it's overused, but if there ever was a space station that deserved the name Icarus, it's this one. So I don't have separation motors on this. Uh, I'm using a trick that I developed for the Even Back series, where I have these uh, little uh, elevons here that are exerting an aerodynamic force on the outside. It's much easier to set up with uh, than separation motors, like you don't have to do staging and whatnot, but the downside is that these boosters might release so far into the upper atmosphere that it might not actually work. Like, it might, the atmosphere might be too thin. So, but we'll see. Yeah, well, this is too high, but we can't turn over because we're at the jettison. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, so it doesn't work when we're already like 40 kilometers up, but like, it works pretty well in like Eve's thick atmosphere and Kerbin's low atmosphere. And I almost physics warped, but I, uh, I realized that I was set to, like, the ultimate fast time warp for ion engines, and not the normal 1-2-3-4. So I'm back on 1-2-3-4, uh, should be acceptable now. I can deploy this fairing and reveal the wonderful stack of ion tanks we have under here. Uh, so we have the nuclear stage, and that is going to take us through the, uh, the jewel burn. Well, not visual, but the, the burn that will get our apple up is around Jewel, and it'll do the plane change around Jewel. Uh, and you could do that much more efficiently with ion engines, but then you'd have to take a whole bunch of solar panels out there, uh, which uh, this entire thing is powered by uh, eight ion engines, which can be powered by like even the smallest solar panel at the distances we're going to be using the most often. So we get overshot a bit, but you know, it's okay, it's acceptable. So let's. Uh, Let's go to sol solar escape. Kerbal, Kerbal escape. Kerbin escape. <laughs> I can speak English, I promise. I'll talk a bit more about the design of the station core itself uh, a little bit later. I don't like how uh, wibbly wobbly that is. And there we are, nuclear time. I just realized this antenna probably will not be enough for the, uh, the ranges at which we expect to perform the plane change maneuver. Uh, but we'll find that out the hard way, I guess. These solar panels are temporary, and just in case we did need to use the ion engines around Jules, and they're detached before we, uh, before we get back. Before we reach low solar orbit, I mean. And if we forget to detach them, they'll just burn up. Like, honestly, I probably could have saved on decoupler mass. Wait, why am I colliding them on? Uh, okay. Looks like we're gonna have a really low passive of mine, I guess. Uh, and then we'll accelerate a bit more after there so we don't crash into it or anything. That's, that's worth the inefficiency, just looking cool. So, I never thought this would see another celestial body up close again, but look where fate has brought us. Hi, man. Bye, man. And everything was budgeted for an apple to surround Jewel. 
like around Jubal's height, it's not like not like physically around Jubal's sphere of influence or anything. It's about seventy gigameter, should I say? And seventy gigameters, that's that's all right. And just in case we don't have uh, an antenna to reach there, I mean, I'm kind of gonna I'm gonna cry if we don't have an antenna that reaches that far. Guess what? Okay, twenty three percent. Uh, I need to make the maneuver here, and then point there and execute it later on. So, th again, the reason we're going out this far is because it's way cheaper to do the plane change needed to enter a polar orbit out here. It's exactly a 90, and then we need to go this way to get it down to a periapsis of roughly 200 megameters or so. And just so we don't risk going low, because like when you're burning retrograde, you will descend your orbit by a little bit, so I'm going to go a bit high because it'll lower by itself naturally over time. So that looks like a pretty spot on maneuver. I'm gonna point there right now because I won't be able to later because of communications. And I'll have to remember to uh, bring a bigger antenna on the later missions. And good thing we brought these big solar panels because it does look like we are going to need to use ion engines for part of the burn. We're gonna be about 300 meters per second short. That's gonna be difficult. Well, not difficult, just brutal from a time warp perspective. Oh, hey, we have connection. It's like, it might die before we get to the node, but we have connection. 10%, 9%. I'm mad that, that luck. That Kerbin is right there. Like, we have 8% signal strength out this distance, but I don't want to rely on it. Alright, here we go. And the game has done that wonderful thing again where there's no engine noise. I still don't know why it does that, but for some reason it does. So this maneuver is uh, 2.3 kilometers per second up here or so. Uh, and... It allows us to lower our periapsis efficiently, and it allows us to change the uh, plane efficiently. That maneuver would have been something like uh, over 10 kilometers per second had we done it at a lower altitude, like Kerbin's altitude. And it costs us only like maybe two more to get out here, so it's still a net gain of like five or six or something, if I remember right. Anyway, so while we're here, let's talk about the design of the station. Uh, this is the sun-facing side. Uh, then, of course, we have crew capacity for eight. Uh, these are, are empty right now. They're just to store the extra, the extra, hold on, yeah, the extra xenon gas we have in the uh, transfer stage area. And of course we've got antennas, solar panels. Okay, these solar panels are getting ditched after this island burn. We have radiators at the back. Uh, and then we have four radial solar panels around this side that are going to be used when we're above the sun. But for the actual ion burns, we're going to use these two mirror ones placed that are angled away from the sun so that, uh, we can be a bit more aggressive with them and have them not burn up. And of course there's four docking ports. And as for the transfer stage itself, uh, it uses up its uh, ion fuel tanks in batches of two, except for the last bit which has four. And there's a total of eight ion engines. Which is a brutally long burn time. I think I calculated it. It's something like uh, maybe like at least one Kerbal day worth of ion burn. Probably way more. Like I'll calculate it again later on because I'll probably get bored enough to. But yeah, this is the core module. There will be at least one other module, a scientific module, and I don't think I'll actually send any other direct space station modules, but then there will be the crew return vehicle, and of course the, the, the sun diver. I have told you about the sun diver, right? Like the little craft that detaches and then goes lower around the sun. It's like 200 megameters. It was chosen because I can uh, have this exist there. The, the cupola is really, 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 really close to burning up at 200 megameters, and you'll actually see that. Uh, so like it's the lowest I can go without like super macho heat shielding, basically. Assuming I choose my parts carefully. And yes, the iron engine plumes are gonna hit the windows and bounce off, but I couldn't find a really better spot for them. Uh, like I mean, yeah, you I guess you have them in the back technically, but like, uh, when you're doing super high time warp, it's very beneficial to have the engine at the front to keep the entire craft in tension because in Kerbal Space Program. Structures tend to be uh, more more strong in uh, tension than in compression. All right, so that's our nuclear stage gone. So we'll have to do 350 meters per second worth of ion burning at this altitude. Uh, so there goes that. I'm gonna do a big old quick save. Uh, activate the engines. And as you can see now in our bottom left-hand corner, the Delta V counter here, we have 26 and a half kilometers per second and we only need 23 and a half at this point. So we have a margin of about three kilometers per second. And that extra xenon will be stored in the in inboard tanks to refuel any spaceship that might need a little bit of extra xenon. But anyway, at this altitude, 
I'm actually going to extend even the small solar panels because uh, we will need pretty much everything we can get. I think this orientation maximizes available solar panel space. And as you can see, oh, actually, uh, okay, well, what's our, what throttle can we manage? That is not very much throttled at all. Okay, but we have a solution for this. Uh, the solution is we shut down seven, no, we shut down six of the eight iron engines, and then see what thrust limiter on the other two. What if you set them both to like around four and a half? That's still too much. These are generating power, right? 4.5. What if we set these thrust limiters to two, please? Will you work, please? I'm running two ion engines at 2% thrust. Ah. <laughs> uh, Cause it was, I did this maneuver with just the two small solar panels, like in practice, at 0.5 on both of these ion engines. I'm very confused. Okay, yeah. As to why... Oh, hold on. I'm stupid. I was using... I was doing the thrust limiter on the wrong engines. So let's let's try and... It's these two engines that we're dealing with. So I set that one to 13. Let's set this one to 13. Alright, 11.5. Will one of these work on 12? Yeah, but only one of them. I want them even. Alright, so now... This is still a brutal burn. Because we're running on 13%... Sorry, 11.5% thrust on two of our eight ion engines. So, like, divide that by four. We're running on roughly 3% thrust. But even 3% thrust, if I switch to hyper -er warp, uh, if I do one click of this thing, I can get up to 50. I can get up to 50x. If I do one click of this thing, stop pinging me on Discord! <laughs> okay. That's taken care of. I've moved the sewer for an hour. Anyway, so. Yeah, better time warp. We can go to 50x time acceleration. And this ship, 50 is about all it can take. If I go to 100, it'll crack it out. Uh, but even then, like, it's taking about a second. It'll take about five minutes real time to complete this burn, but, uh, yeah. I don't have anything to follow that up. That's, that's what'll happen. So. I'm gonna do a quick save. And I'm gonna basically let this run. Uh, I probably will not do a time lapse. Because hard drive space, yay. Alright, the burn is almost done, and I just noticed that the node was five hours ago. So this burn was legit one curve in day long, and it took like five minutes in real life, thanks to the awesomeness of better time warp. I overshot by 0.2 meters per second, but looking at my desetting node, it's still exactly ni negative 90, and my periapsis is still about 206, so that's acceptable. So, I just realized that the probe core I have on this thing is uh, actually too low temperature tolerance, but it's inside a service bay, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, when I did test this, I had a crew inside, so I don't know if that blew up or not. Uh, so, it's going to be very, very iffy here. Here comes the sun. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> We're going to have communication. Okay, good. We are going to have communications with, with Kerbin throughout this. Uh, ignore that. That's just a test that I put there. Uh, it's not actually legit. It, please ignore the Icarus station core that is currently in elliptical solar orbit there. Alright, we're starting to heat up here. Oh, a good a good idea would probably be to uh, re-increase the thrust limiters on these and activate them. And that's eight. All eight, uh, all eight engines are now back to full to full throttle. Well, full full bore. Uh, Okay, I can retract these these four uh, solar panels as they will pretty much not do much for us at all. I do want to keep uh, these Gigantors out just to see how much power they're going to generate. However, a thousand times time warp, the limit is about 600 uh, megameters before everything starts exploding due to overheating. So I'm going to have to take it slow. And now I'm going to do... Probably two and a half hours of burning uh, at peri Periapis. I'm going to start burning uh, about, I'd say, four, an hour and 15 before the Periapse and continue into an hour 15 after the Periapse. And th this thing is generating 7,000 electric charge per second. We can do very daring short bursts up to uh, 1,000 times X 
1,000 times x, what am I saying, at this altitude, but it's very risky. But it's worth it, because otherwise it just takes so long. Because, like, thermodynamics get really wonky in time warp. Oh, that was really close. All right. Since I'm only an hour 51 out, I'm probably not going to do any more uh, riskiness. One hour, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. All right. Oh, there goes our big solar panel. I definitely could have saved on decoupler mass. And these small solar... Okay, there goes our other one. Uh, I'm going to put... Okay, these two solar panels, that's why we have these on the back side. Uh, oh, that's not the back side. Okay. Because if we lose these, we're in trouble. Okay. Alright, there we are. This solar panel... Okay, it's blocked, but, like, there we are. We're currently getting, like, a ridiculous amount of power out of it, and it's barely exposed to the sun at all. Anyway, so this is this is uh, the configuration that we're going to have for retrobreaking. And I'm going to... Actually, hold on. I'm going to do another quick save. Actually, hold on. I can get rid of these decouplers, because the Gigantors did indeed uh, yeet off. <gasps> Then, let's go, let's let's get into a low solar polar orbit. Uh, it's lagging. It doesn't usually lag like this. I'm going to go into... Nope, that's worse. Maybe it's the recording app? Like, it doesn't usually lag like this. It was butter smooth when I did 50 times warp like this during the test, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. But I'll just let it continue on for a while. Okay, the frame rate is significantly improved. Uh, we're about 40 minutes from our perigee, and the minutes are going by like seconds. Okay, that's our first uh, set of fuel tanks done. Uh, so we can ditch them, and they're going to hit uh, the antenna, but that doesn't matter. And you can see our acceleration in real time, judging by how fast these things are going. So uh, that's kind of cool. There's not, like, a major milestone here, but I would like to stop to say the game froze. Uh, the Apoapsis is about uh, at Moho's average altitude here. This side is a bit low, so it's still above on this side, but, like, our Apoapsis is below where Moho normally is. And that is our second set of takes tanks gone. Uh, here they go. Wee. Goodbye. Never to be seen again. And this periapsis pass, I'm going to ditch the, uh, I'm going to use three sets of tanks, basically. That's my thing. And you can see in real time, well, 50 times accelerated time, how fast we are moving relative to the sun. And I find that a bit crazy. Like how we are at a position where we can literally see how fast we are moving with respect to a star. And there goes our third set of fuel tanks, and that, I do believe, is going to be the end of this first periapsis kick. Uh, we reduced our periapsis from 206 to 204, so I guess I am mostly calculating right. And our apoapsis is uh, about 10 times higher than it needs to be, but that's fine. Uh, our ascending node, with respect to Kerbin, got uh, changed a bit, so I wonder how much it'll take to correct that. Because, like, it doesn't need to be exactly spot on 90. 88.1, no. Stop. Ah. Maneuver. Do. Ah. It'll take 100 meters per second. And that's tolerable. I can I can use, no, not even 100, like 76.6 meters per second to have a perfect 90 degree inclination. Assuming I don't mess it up during further burns. Uh, so I think that's fair. Oh no. Okay. Did anything explode there? The, the octo exploded. So I do need to load the quick save. That was what I was talking about. The probe core is the lowest heat tolerance part on this thing. I really should have used a better probe core. Because, like, I, did, I literally did use that for the earlier probe. I just have to be really careful with, with how I time warp through this. Because until we get above 600, we're kind of limited to 100 unless you go to the tracking station. You know what? I'm going to go to the tracking station. I think that'll end up being faster. And off it goes. While I'm at it, uh, is there anyone on this? Okay, good. I'm going to kill this test version. So now it's just this. And that should be it. And now we're almost at the maneuver. And to the maneuver we go. Uh, something went wonky there. Uh, oh, no, it was just that I did, I, at this altitude, I don't have enough electricity to perform the burn. That makes sense. Yeah, so if I throttle down to like about half, 
uh, that should be sufficient. Inverse square law and all that. No, oh, no, just the angle that I'm at. At this angle, I can burn indefinitely. Just that my solar panels weren't aligned. That's the problem. Four, three, two, one. And that's close enough. It's literally zero. All right, our sitting node with carbon is 90. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go to the tracking station again to get us lower. So I want to stop when the periapsis is about an hour 15 away. Yep, about there. Uh, something went wonky there. That shouldn't have happened. Okay, maybe there's some flaws with my time warp plan. Uh, but, like, I've done this in testing before. It's fine if I do it manually. It's just, I might not be able to time warp like that. Which is disappointing, if true, because it means rendezvous will be so much more harder. Which also make rendezvous... No, no, no. Like, wait, what if I go into physics range and the thing just spontaneously combusts? I don't know, like, would it be justifiable to use a little bit of, uh, just five seconds of ignore max temperature for something that's obviously a loading bug? I don't know. It would make me feel awful. And that's about the lowest we can use actual time warp. But 200x physics warp, uh, which yes, I do have a 200x physics warp button, <laughs> uh, will get us a bit closer. But not by much. So I guess it's just back to normal 100x at this point. Step so uh, you're, this is an acceptable amount of time to just hit the screen and watch. And there's our 15 minute mark. Oh, that's that's a lot of heat. Align of the correct thing, full throttle, and off we go for another retro burn. I forgot to uh, detach the fuel tanks. Yes, I did. So here's our last set on the last set on each stack. Jessen's different. Put Jessen like that, and it looks cool. How much of this did I? Oh my! I almost used two entire tank. Honestly, since the tanks are like not don't weigh that much each, it's not that big, and we had extra delta V to begin with. So, uh, yeah. But we went through two thirds of the burn. Lickety split, just like that. 
All right, now let's jettison that tank. And our apoapsis is almost below one gigameter, which is quite the milestone. Is that means that this station was or is orbiting in just space low, like three, two, one, and that's the one gigameter barrier. We have a space station orbiting uh, below one fifth of Moho's orbit, with apoapsis wise. And I might not burn this entire tank here because the periapsis is getting pretty low, uh, and we still have one more orbital kick to go. But I might finish it. I don't know. We'll see. I'm almost there. I might as well. I can always correct the orbit later, although fuel is limited. And there we are. So now I'm going to figure out just how far I can tracking station time warp this. Because I obviously I can't put it directly at periapsis. But if I can't load it at that altitude at all, then how will I actually get there? Like, here should be acceptable. Like, if it's not, okay, like, quick loading works, but for some reason loading from the tracking station doesn't work. I'm not entirely sure how that works. Okay, there we are. Loading from the tracking station will work at this altitude, but that is a very high altitude to descend from. Like, that cut half the time off the journey, but it's still a long journey. Periapsis as of right now is 10 hours away. 100 time x, that's not, uh, that's like six full minutes of waiting, and I'm not about that. And there we pass over the sun's north pole. I wonder if there's anything there. I'm gonna start this one early, just because I feel like it. I don't think I can actually play piano through this one, because now the more that I look at this, we are getting into a dangerously low orbit. Our periapsis is still far away, and it's uh, 188. This station is rated at one times time warp for just barely under 200, and we are under 200 right now, so I think I started this too early. Now I don't want to like, oh, I'm going to squeak through my time warp, so I'm going to do whatever periapsis I get at. I'm going to stop for a second to prove that these things won't explode at that altitude, so that it would have been legitimate at a normal Kerbal. Uh, I know, sorry, Periapt is getting further away. We need to stop this now. Uh, I didn't realize the time to Periapt is we're getting further away. Uh, so, at Periaptus, I'm going to shrink our Apoaptus further, and then I'm going to raise Periaptus at Apoaptus. That's how this is going to work. Now, will we survive at 184 megameters above the sun? This craft was not designed for that regime. Like, honestly, we have a suspicious amount of fuel left over. Granted, we did have the nuclear stage. Okay, moment of truth. But we are just barely holding on at 184 megameters. So, uh... We could put the station down here if we wanted to, but judging how the cupola reacts when it's in a phase-down position, I don't want to. Like, sure, we can we we dip down with the station to 184 mega 185 ish, uh, but no, the station is still going to be placed at 199 ish as planned. We're still we can say we're below 200, 
any more than that is seriously tempting fate. If you look at these radiators right here and this antenna, they're about to melt. How's fuel doing? Oh, fuel is empty in these ones, so there you go. Goodbye. So now I just have the four core tanks left. You want to walk all over his keyboard yeah. and help him? You want to help him play cool? <laughs> you know. Yeah. If you want, you can probably set him down right here. He won't stay there, though. He won't, yeah. You know, there we are. Uh, the Apoapis is in line. We still have 5.2 kilometers per second of Delta V left. And I think that'll be enough to bring our 182 megameter periapsis up to Apoapsis. Now, at this point, I must say uh, that, granted, I'm going back up, but I have reason to believe that this may be a world record. Because uh, I checked the forums, and it turns out that the lowest solar orbit that I can find evidence of was like all, all the way back in like 1.0 point something. Uh, by, I think it was Foxter with a apo apoapsis of 271 megameters. So I have reason, I have not been able to find anything better than that. I started thread asking and apparently nobody else has, nobody else has responded with evidence to the contrary. But uh, I, this may be legitimately the lowest orbit around the sun reached like, like w without cheats ever. And it's with a space station in polar orbit. <laughs> and I'm going to go lower later on. Uh, nope, that didn't work. <laughs> I tried to time warp and I paid the price. And after I quick load, okay, yeah, quick loading works. Uh, but for some reason the tracking station doesn't work. I'm going to try that again. I'm going to try, maybe it was a fluke the one time it exploded from the tracking station. Please don't explode. If I time warp right away, it won't. Okay, nope, it exploded. Uh, so I have to load the quick save again. I guess I might just have to time warp manually. Maybe I can save at the space center, then load to that save later on. You know, yeah, I'm gonna try that. So I go to the space center, save it. No, sorry, no. If I go to the space center, sorry, tracking station, time warp ahead, save the game, and then load that save. Wait, no, that won't work. That won't work because I won't be focused on the craft. Hmm. For something that is in thermodynamic equilibrium, but the weirdness of the game's loading prohibits me from uh, from interacting with it uh, very easily. Now that it's, especially now that I've achieved this orbit legitimately. Wait, hold on. Maybe it has something to do with the fact that the parts are like this. So if I leave to the tracking station, well, everything is cool, and then come back when uh, they come back, that might work. Because it might be the heat of loading gets applied to the heat that's already there. Which means that I'll have to remember to time warp every time I leave the thing, which is not exactly ideal. So I must quick save often. Assuming this works. Assuming it works. And what do you know it? I was right, it works. So, and there's no cheats on, as you can see. Uh, so basically, the uh, in order to leave to the tracking station, we have to be time warping enough so that the craft is completely cool. Because the heat that gets applied to load, like on loading, is enough to completely explode the craft, basically. Uh, in addition to the heat, it's already there. But if there's no heat all the way there, it just goes up to uh, what it should be. So if I exit the tracking station, then time warp, and then load this, it should be completely 100% fine. Okay. I guess my previous assessment was incorrect. So then why did it work before and not there? Maybe it's the way I'm facing upon loading, which would make it really hard to maneuver reasonably well. Uh, I think the game may have crashed. Nope, and everything exploded. Okay, so if I want to stay perfectly legit, uh, I can't load the craft from the tracking station ever, which is not ideal, to say the least. Um, so what I'll probably end up doing is after this module is in place, if I need to do it, I'll just use like ignore max temperature for five seconds. It takes the craft to load. Uh, since the low orbit was achieved without uh, use of any debug menu, I can claim that. Anything beyond that, like the lower altitude records, might be a little bit sketch, though, as far as like absolutely official is concerning. But in my, in my opinion, it's justified for me, although it might not be justified for everyone. This has taken so long, but we're finally almost there. Four minutes away, I think this is an appropriate time to start the burn. We're gonna overheat. 
Okay, we didn't overheat. We didn't overheat. We're good. We're good. We didn't overheat. Uh, need to keep this side pointed away from the sun. Yeah, now prograde is the right way to be pointing right now, so that's fine. Anyway, fire up the engines. Here we go. We need to raise the periaps to about 198. I'm just going to do 12x warp here. Just for gentler changes. Oh, uh, I went too far. Alright, let's, uh... Well, let's lower... Let's lower it a little bit. And here we are. Uh, it's technically to complete the inauguration of this station. I do need to do a few more things. Uh, I don't need these engines anymore. So I am going to transfer all of the fuel in these uh, forward transfer stage tanks into the these side tanks. Because we won't need the engines anymore, hopefully. Uh, watch as we end up needing the engines. I might make a save saying, oh, before we before we ditch the engines, here's, here's a save to come back to if you need it. How much are these solar panels generating? When they get hot, they generate less, so it's about like 500 or something like that at this point. So it's used, it should be a lot more, just that they're too hot to do anything. Uh, the proper orientation for this station uh, is nose down into the sun. And the cupola gets really, really, really hot during this. So I'm going to do a big old quick save number five. Here it goes. Goodbye, propulsion section. You've served us well. Those iron engines must be so tired by now. All right, so I'm going to retract these two solar panels ever so gently nudge towards the sun. That cupola is going to get hot, but it won't explode. It will not explode. It's going to look like it's going to explode, and you're not going to believe that I don't have uh, if ignore max temperature on. But as you can see right here, it's very clearly off. And, okay, actually, no, it's not as hot as I remember it being. And then, to provide the actual station power, these ones that are behind, oh... I just realized something. The solar panels might be blocked by the xenon tanks. Okay, good, they aren't. Who? Because I added the xenon tanks after I tested everything. Like, I just slapped them on as a last minute thing. So, I'm really happy that the solar panels aren't uh, blocked. That is... That is a huge relief. Anyway. Wow. So, we have a space station in a solar orbit of under 2 hundred megameters in polar solar orbit. Granted, technically it's not a multi-modular space station yet. We still have to take another module and take the crew and then take the thing that goes lower, but that is undisputably we we did it. <laughs> we did it. Uh, thank you so much for watching this episode of Solar Station. Uh Ultimate Steve out. Oh.